Today on Business World, is coding really a foreign language? Computer programming skills are arguably just as useful as fluency in a second language. Some high schools are taking action by teaching programming. While replacing a foreign language requirement is certainly controversial, implementing coding courses at the high school level is not. With initiatives like The Hour of Code, an hour-long introduction to coding, designed to teach anyone the basics, more and more schools are embracing the reality that computer programming isn't just for aspiring tech pros. Computer programming is, in an overblown but still legitimate sense, the literacy of the 21st century, says former language instructor and programmer Brady Dill. By studying computer programming, a student learns a potentially useful tool that could be applied to a lucrative career path. Whether or not more states follow in Florida's footsteps, there's no denying that teaching programming is a valuable skill for today's youth. Understanding the lingo when it comes to teaching programming. When schools talk about adding coding courses or programming curriculum, are they talking about the same thing? Yes, the two terms are essentially interchangeable. Programming implies a certain level of coding skills and experience. Perhaps to help make computer programming seem more accessible, the term coding came into usage to describe the basic act of writing code without the implications of being a full-blown programmer. Both terms get tossed around quite a bit when people discuss training students. But whether schools are talking about coding or programming, they're referring to the same skill set. Florida's decision to allow programming to fulfill the foreign language requirement is somewhat contested. According to an article in the Miami Herald, opponents fear that coding, though a valuable skill, doesn't provide students with the cultural literacy that a traditional foreign language would. This cultural awareness is increasingly important in our globalized world. Dill emphasizes that the U.S. is actually far behind almost any other country in terms of foreign language literacy. By studying foreign languages, students increase understanding of their own native language and learn to communicate with other people, something computer programming cannot do, he says. Many educators and employers would like to see schools teaching both programming and foreign languages as globalization continues to impact our industries. We're interacting more between cultures, says Mike Olson, co-founder of Smart Intern China. Learning a prominent foreign language, such as Mandarin or Spanish, is a top need for young Americans. Olson believes that skills in both programming and foreign languages are important for students to stay competitive in an increasingly global market. And he points out that other countries are already offering coding in public schools. Yet with many schools struggling through financial trouble, the day coding becomes part of widespread curriculum might still be a long way off. We're slowly seeing coding classes being offered outside of school, Olson says. Those who value the skill that comes with coding and who can afford it will go elsewhere for that aspect of their education. Welcome back to Business World. Today we have a, our special guest, Linda Markley, here to discuss uh, why coding has been put in place in foreign language as a foreign language requirement. Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay. So why has coding been uh, put in uh, foreign language rather than like elective or science? Because normally you would think computer programming and coding would fall under what they call STEM, science, technology, mm -hmm. engineering, engineer, mathematics. Why, why has it been placed in foreign language instead? Well, a few years ago, Senator Ring from South Florida, who was an ex-CEO uh, of Yahoo, introduced oh, wow. legislation in Tallahassee to um, have coding count as a foreign language. And we've defeated it for three years in a row. Um, but now there are actually three bills that have right. to do with coding up before the legislative session. And two of them would like, it's evolved and they recognize that coding is now, is really a computer science or to, right. should be in the math realm or the science realm. Right. But there's still one with Senator Brandis from um, the Pinellas County area who is wanting computer coding to count as a foreign language. Wow, that's amazing. And you know, oftentimes I talk about it in the show that there's a symbiotic relationship between uh, the business community and politics. Mm -hmm. And I think this really hi highlights, um, you know, the, a perfect e example, mm -hmm. uh, how they're able to basically, you know, uh, pursue their, their interests. And mm -hmm. oftentimes those interests are 
diametrically opposed to the interests uh, at, of the community at large. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a bit upsetting to, to see that they're going in, in this direction, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Well, I mean, when I went up to Tallahassee mm -hmm. to speak before the legislators, there were a lot of lobbyists there for tech companies. Wow. And, wow. Um, okay. and because they'll sell computers to schools, because another thing that they've been proposing, because there mm -hmm. aren't enough uh, computer coding teachers in the mm, schools okay. to um, offer it through Florida Virtual School and so they would need a computer lab and right. they would put the kids in a computer lab and teach it virtually. Um, I mean that that sounds uh, a bit unrealistic I think because something like like coding I, I think you know even there's a shortage of teachers so I, I would imagine that students will have you know a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, it almost sounds like they're trying to you know, uh, well, it's like they're putting some type of business deal together. But mm -hmm. um, well, I have a niece who actually took. Uh, mm -hmm. She was put in that elective as a senior because she there was okay. no other elective that would work in her schedule. Right. And she didn't like. She didn't want to take computer coding. Right. And she was in a lab, and uh, she didn't have a teacher that she could really ask questions. The teacher right. was real was certified in something else and didn't know anything about computer coding, wow. and she was failing the class because she couldn't get the help she needed. I, I've read uh, many articles on, on the topic and one of the arguments that they make is that um, that a foreign language, you take it for a year or two, it doesn't really do much for students as far mm -hmm. as being able to be in a, be in, speak it. But when you read about what coding is, coding is really, yeah, it's part of computer programming, but there's a distinction. It's the, the basic, the most basic act is coding. Mm -hmm. So if you can make the argument that if you take coding for a year or two, it's not going to do you any good either, mm -hmm. because that's just the, the the beginning stages of computer programming. You know, I think uh, on both ends, one, you know, it's it's basically a foundation that that they can build from. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I think it kind of um, cancels out that that argument that they make that mm -hmm. that foreign language is essentially useless to learn it for two years mm -hmm. because there's. Well, even Code.org came out right in the very beginning saying that they did not support uh, computer coding counting as a foreign language. Wow. They said that it is it is a basic you know, entry level and it should be a computer science and computer sure. science is not sure. a foreign language. Absolutely. And then you have the, the, whole other, the whole other issue that, I mean, the reality is that students are going to pursue their interests or their passions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to make someone take uh, coding mm -hmm. when they have no interest in it, it's, right. it's kind of useless because it mm -hmm. seems like a very dry you know, mm -hmm. topic if, if, you're, if you're not interested in tech, tech stuff. Well, a, a so. lot of this originally, originally started right. when uh, they did a, you know, a survey or, and found that America was behind in right. um, technology. And so STEM has come about. and. Sure. And there's a great focus on STEM because of sure. a little bit of generation from fear that we're going to be behind sure. and that sort of thing. Um, right. But Google just came out. They did a study um, oh. over um, starting, I think, in 2013. And they had some shocking results from that for them and for the rest of the world. They found that the right. top eight skills that were required for a Google employee to be, and they looked at the data of right. people that were hired, fired, and promoted in the company. Okay. And they found that the, of the top eight skills, STEM skills were dead last. Wow. <laughs> and the top seven skills were soft skills of right. communication and human interaction, right. which is what a world language teaches children to do. It teaches us as human beings how to relate to one another, right. communicate with one another. And um, Interesting. So. And, and that, that brings up another issue, another issue, which is, um, okay, so there is a push for STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mm -hmm. And the argument is that the world, the other countries are ahead of us. For example, India, if you will. But he, he, here's the problem with, with that argument, whether it's true or not. But let's say we, down the line, five years, 10, 15 years, we, we're at par with the rest of the world as far as computer programmers, engineers. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the problem. They're still going to be issuing with the H-1 visas and hiring foreign employees. So the question becomes, you know, if you, ha if you have a foreign engineer or programmer that's just as qualified, 
but you pay them a lower salary, aren't they going to go with the lower salary anyway? So mm -hmm. the problem is more than just training, you know, people in STEM. It's it's the whole globalization. It's um, you know protecting labor. Mm -hmm. it, it's not this alone is not going to solve the problem. That's 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 my point. Right. It's right. not. And another thing too with business. I mean, right. the Florida Department of Labor and they released a, a report that said by the year 2023 in the state of Florida, um, there would be about 200,000 jobs that, um, w it would be nice to have coding skills, right. but that there would be over a million jobs in Florida that would require foreign language skills. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. So. Interesting, so uh, I guess I wanna get a feel for, you mentioned that when you were in Tallahassee, there was a lot of lobbyists pushing for coding. What was the uh, pushback like? How, how many people were actually uh, pushing back for, for foreign languages? Um, I just want to get a feel for the ratio. There were businesses. I mean, right. I have been involved with the Florida Foreign Language Association for a very long time, and we have been advocating for our profession, of course, um, because they've been cutting programs for various reasons, funding, and right. now with coding, um, it it would if it takes a place and, and we want coding in schools we just want it as a computer science sure. or a math credit sure. um, and we don't want world languages um, eliminated or you know put on the back burner because right. we feel more and more those soft skills and that human connection and and looking at the world through different lenses so that you can you sure. know relate to them and maybe be a little more open-minded and open-hearted I think that's more critical than ever and so we've been really uh, pushing for that. So we've, at our conference, our annual conference in October, we've had panel of business leaders come and talk about how important it is to have world languages. Um, in uh, Jacksonville, for example, they do a lot of business with Brazil. Wow. And they went to the school system there, Duval County, and said, we'd really love for you to start teaching Portuguese. We could use more employees sure. that speak Portuguese because if we have employees that speak Portuguese, we can do better business with Brazil. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and look, languages have obviously been around, you know, literally since the beginning of time, right? And it's, it's, uh, it's a constant, mm -hmm. you know, technology is ever evolving. It's, right. we have coding now, but hey, who knows? In, in a few years, coding may be obsolete. Maybe there'll be, um, something else will come up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But language is part of our history, it's part of our culture. And like you said, it's uh, even technology itself, if you look at a, a lot of the um, social media or apps, you know, behind the technology, and I think you mentioned this earlier, was the desire to connect with people, the mm -hmm. desire to have human interaction mm -hmm. and, and connect. Um, so, you know, we can't, even when they have big tech conferences, well, they don't happen virtually. They happen mm -hmm. on site. Why? Because people want to gather right. and they want to, you know, congregate right. and they want to, you know, speak and connect. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, um, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of sad to see that they're going in this direction with mm -hmm. it. It, it's certain, it certainly is something that, that's necessary. Um, but I, I, you know, when I first heard about this, I, I do think it's, it's, it doesn't fit in the, mm -hmm. in the right category, if you will. Right. That's, well, that's, you that's mentioned something to me um, in our other conversation about artificial intelligence, and it reminds me of the movie that Steven Spielberg did called Artificial Intelligence. Right. And little boy David, who didn't blink or do anything like that because he was basically a robot right. boy. And, um, and I think of it, I, I really can relate to that as far as with the coding and world languages. So with the coding, it would be a little bit like David where he had no human emotion, he had no processing other than what he was programmed with. And right. so his mother was giving, given a list of words Right. <laughs> to, to kind of say that would trigger love in him. What he And he didn't really know what love was. Right. And it was hard for him to connect because it was right. just a program and it was not that human interaction and there wasn't that, you know, looking someone in the eye, you know, right. and the eyes being right. the window to the soul. And that's right. how we wow, really relate and connect deep. to like each that. other. Okay. So um, right. com computer coding gets us there. It can be a vehicle to help facilitate it or to Right. make life you know a little easier but it can't replace this right here absolutely they linda can. thank you thank you so much for coming really appreciate you being here with us you're welcome it's right. my pleasure friends thank you for watching mdc tv stay with us there's more to come here on business world
college is a great, great college. It changed my life. Miami Dade is really like a family. They really embrace the students. They really have a way of making you feel wanted, making you feel loved, making you feel that you could really do what you desire to do. I am very happy that I came to Miami Dade College North. Wonderful faculty, um, wonderful advisors. I feel speechless because they're so good at what they do. I feel that students should not give up. They should become someone. They should, they should be in a major that they love. And Miami Day really, you know, has made a huge impact on my life for the better. I feel that everyone should do that. Everyone should take that extra step and continue their education. Come here to Miami Dade. Miami Dade is great. Welcome back to Business World. Joining us in, for this section is Mari Corujedo. Mari, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, Mari, where, where do you stand on this issue of, of the uh, coding being uh, placed under a foreign language requirement? Where, where do you fall? Where are you at with this issue? Um, we're not against mm -hmm. um, coding. Um, we basically just realized and we wanted the public to know and everyone to know right. that both are important. Right. In today's world, um, children need to be and know technology. They need to be able to manipulate and be able right. to work with technology. But ha knowing and right. manipulating a second language or a foreign language or their first language is key also right. for their success. So we are not in the position of opposing or being for. Right. Basically, we need to categorize it in the correct category and not put it pit it against um, foreign language. Okay, okay. You mentioned we several times. Is there a specific group of parents or, or teachers that are pushing back on this issue? Well, we are the League of mm -hmm. United Latin American Citizens, which is LULAC. Okay. And um, it's, it's a civil rights organization. Sure. And we have been addressing this issue for several years already. Okay. So this was coming down the pipeline. This is not something new that just yes. uh, showed up. This is... Yes. Uh, who, who, who are the, some of the proponents of, of this, um, you know? You, you have some legislatures bill, bill yeah, in, in Tallahassee that have mm -hmm. been the proponents of, uh, of this bill. And it's been defeated a couple of times. The people have spoken, have made right. their phone calls, have made their voices heard in Tallahassee in right. a position of the bill. Unfortunately, the bill keeps coming back. In wow. every session. Even after, so even right. though people continue to right. say no, we, this is not the 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 right. path we want to go on. Right. Um, they continue to bring the pill back. So that 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 is something that has been occurring for the last cut past right. legislature and sessions. What what why or what would be the motivation to continue continually you know bring the bill back even though there is a strong opposition to it? Is this part of um, a small part of a, of a second concentric circle to uh, reshape public education in some way? Is this, is this uh, a different vision for public education? Or I, I, Look, to be yeah. honest, okay. we have never been able to get a, the correct answer because, I mean, right. we have spoken on the issue. We've tried to, we, we tried to work with both sides, with the Republicans and the okay. uh, Democrats at, in Tallahassee. We're nonpartisan, so right. we really are not here picking sides. Right. Basically, we're looking to see what best fits our students in our, in our schools. Sure. Um, however, there's a lot of people in mm -hmm. Tallahassee who have um, different interests because they all have connections, whether it's to charter schools or to technology or to right. different um, special areas where it might pose a conflict. So they present these bills that are detrimental to, as we know, as to education. But even though we give them the research and everything behind it, they continue to bring these bills up wow. at session after session. So that is something that I would love to get the answer to. Right, but right, unfortunately, right. Unfortunately, um, there are no, some uh, people who have a conflict of interest that are always making policy in Tallahassee. Right. No, I, I think you you know you've touched up on it you know accurately, which is it goes back to you know. And, I, and I've talked about it uh, many times in the show, which is there is a symbiotic relationship between the business community and politics yes. at, at every level. Yes. And the higher you go, 
the stronger that relationship becomes. Yes. Um, so this is at the state level, yes. and you know you you see you see that a lot, which is issues of education, yes. uh, issues of insurance, so yes. on and so forth. So going back to this, uh, a lot of the proponents of the bill claim that this would create more jobs. Right. What, what, what do you what do you think about that statement? I, I think you think, I think it will that, create more jobs in, in coding. I mean, or? I'm pretty sure it can. Right. Um, however, right. it can't be pitted against foreign language, world languages, or bilingual education. Right. Why? Because you have to offer choice to ch children. Not absolutely. everyone absolutely. is going to go into coding. Right. Absolutely. Right. Coding will benefit right. a a uh, percentage of the population of our kids. Right. But every country that you go out there that is an advanced country does mm -hmm. teach their children right. another language. Yeah. We are one of the few, few if not the only, right. um, major country right. that is monolingual. Yeah. And we defend being monolingual, which is something that I don't understand. I don't Because either, I, don't either, right. I, right. I was born in New York. My okay. parents, mm -hmm. um, are you know we're from Puerto Rico right and we learn to speak Spanish and mm -hmm. that has opened so many doors for me oh, as, yeah. as I'm pretty sure for many people that came here right. and sp were able to speak a, uh, another language that I don't understand how we have that mentality because children right. who speak more than one language their brain functions totally different and that is research that is not something that is right. made up from one group or another group the research right. shows that if you teach your child to speak one uh, mm -hmm. you know two or three languages they, their brain functions totally different and they tend to achieve and have a very wow. high cognitive so mm -hmm. why is it that we don't want that for our children I don't know and to be honest <laughs> with you to me right. if you if I were to answer that it's because it's investment in education. We don't value, and here in the United States, we need to go back to valuing education and resources and putting money into education. Every time that we create a budget, and you see that in Tallahassee all the time, right. we try, we want to stripe, you know, strip our schools from the funding that they need to provide the children choices. Right. No, that's, that's so true. I remember, um, when I was uh, doing my, my undergraduate, mm -hmm. I, I participated in a study abroad program, and I went to South Africa. And I was surprised <laughs> that they spoke like three languages. Yes. And I was like, what? We're in Africa, and they're speaking like three languages, you know? Yes. And I know for sure that in Europe, it's, un it's not uncommon for them to speak four, you know, four, basically all the European languages. They, yes. You know, it's not uncommon at all. Yes. Um, so in that sense, yeah, we're we're very far behind. But you seem to think it's based. There's a link between the that the funding is not there. Is that, oh, it's, uh, or, I, I like, honestly, I honestly believe it's all about funding. Funding? You don't think I like think we're? It's, it's right. all about funding because mm -hmm. you see, um, here in Florida, LULAC yeah. was very instrument, instrumental in the '90s um, to bring what was called the consent decree, where children who spoke right. a second language had to be provided support in their home language in order to transition right. into the English language and that is that became part of statue here in Florida but what we have found out is right. that some some places like Miami-Dade they have to provide the bilingual education because our population is so heavily English language learners but right. when you move up north in through the through the state mm -hmm. you will find that that investment is not there because it's money you would have to invest in ESOL teachers you would have to invest in right. Spanish teachers so I honestly think that it has everything to do with funding because a, a coding, you could probably put one teacher and put many students where right. teaching a foreign language will require certain things to do that program successfully. I mean, where, where, <laughs> where, where does the funding go then? Is it, uh, I, I don't want to sound cynical or anything, but it seems like they're always building new buildings and things like yes, that. You know, yes, like, yes, uh, but yes. where, where, does, where does the majority of the funding, is there a, sp a particular, besides building, is there like a particular um, department or field or major that uh, that gets more funding or not really? It's, it's just, look, they, they find the funding to fund for mm. vouchers and now we're calling them scholarships where um, right. some of our, our tax dollars will go to provide monies for people to take children to a private school. And that sounds great and all, okay. but when you okay. think about it, right. when you think about it, it's not like you could take your tax dollars and go to any private school so I, so you're and enroll me, them. So you're telling me I can't uh, take my child to Ransom Everglades with that voucher? No, because no? Ransom okay. Everglades right. is going to take the, the what you provide, but you have to pay on top of that. <laughs> yeah, right. So you know what? It's not like it's, it's comparing right. apples to oranges. You know, right. you, you can't 
do this to your public schools because in, in essence what's happening to our public school system right now is that it's being defunded um, and legislation is being crafted where good bills are trained with bad bills right so, so kind of kind of like uh support the uh, Clean Air Act, and right. then w as, a, as a title, and then within that bill, <laughs> it, it gives corporations the right to uh, pollute more or Absolutely. more carbon emissions. Right, Absolutely. that's a, the semantics game that they use. Or, or saying we're for affordable housing, yes. but when you look at uh, the, the starting price, it's like $230,000. That, that, Absolutely. They're so clever, they're so yes. clever. And, and, and it's, it's, it's also our political system right now, we're picking sides, right. and we, we're not looking at policy that's being made. Yeah. And um, the coding bill is a great it's a it's it's a great tool to give I, I our kids. I think, I think it's think, actually good. I, I think it's really good. I think it's but good. But it has to be like like was said, was said before yeah. in the math, in the science, in the technology I mean, department. I mean, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. not to suggest I was lying before, but <laughs> <laughs> but, but to be honest, um, it, I really was struck when because it's cold, computer programming yes. is under STEM. I yes. mean, it's just clear. It's yes. you know. Science, technology, and junior mathematics. That's computer. So I was like, I don't get it. Why, why do they try to put it under foreign languages? Right. But then the, the semantics itself, see, coding is actually computer programming. Right. But they just created the semantics of coding right. and, and con focus on the language, which is Python, they have C, C sharp, they have all these different languages. Yes. But I mean, to, to say that, that computer languages equate to a real language yes. it's it's a bit of a stretch I, yes. in my opinion it's it's a bit of a stretch and, and to be honest i mean in right. any job and you've been in the job market um i've been through the mar job market and got, right. you know interviewed for jobs and all that yeah. um knowing another language other than english right is going to give you a higher ranking in the sense absolutely, absolutely. especially if the market requires it so right. if you're here in miami there's a lot of people who right. speak spanish so if you speak spanish and it's going to be make you more remarkable so right. so you know and to be frank yeah. I, I don't remember <laughs> unless you're applying for a job in, in tech right. i don't remember when the last time they say absolutely. hey by the way we want you to know coding I, i'm yes. sorry I, I mean i know that's an argument that they make right but it, you're it's more likely for them to say well do you speak spanish because yes. you're in miami yes or you know Portuguese, it depends yes. on the region. but yes. And our local yeah. kids, our local kids um, right. in, in any area here in Miami, whenever they yeah. aspire to go leave high school to get a job, they, the jobs are sometimes are going to other children that come maybe from other countries because they speak a second language. So we have Mar to be very careful with that. Mari, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Friends, thank you for watching MDC TV. If you like, you can also uh, follow us on social media. Thank you.